Hey guys, welcome to another pencil stash video. My name is Rachel and today we are going to be exploring a new medium. So a couple weeks ago I brought you guys to my local uh, Blick Art Supply store and we did just a little bit of exploring and I found some new stuff that I want to try. And today we are going to be checking out this Marabou Art Crayon. So let's open her up and check her out. All right, so I've got some scrap paper here, and let's open this baby up. She is pretty well completely covered. And like I said, this is a Marabou art crayon. I found these at Blick. They came in a whole bunch of different colors, not like a huge array of different colors, but for some reason, this sort of like caramely gold uh, was speaking to me, and actually it's the color caramel. And I don't know, it just seemed like fun. It just seemed like something I had never tried before. I was in kind of a mode of like, what could I do maybe with like backgrounds that isn't, you know, colored pencils. Um, so I thought we could try this out. I have no idea what to expect. It looks a little bit like lipstick kind of consistency. I don't know if you guys can really see that well, but uh, it definitely has a very kind of lipstick vibe to it. Uh, it looks like lipstick with a grip on it. So let's check out kind of what this thing can do. And I don't know if this is the entirety of its contents or like if this is like an ink well back here, I have no idea what to expect here. So without doing any research or homework, let's just try this thing out and then maybe we'll kind of look up uh, a little bit more about this so that we can play around. Ooh, ooh, okay, all right. This is very lipstick-like, that's hysterical. It kind of has like the look of crayon where it's not like completely, you know, smooth. It has a lot of, um, you know, kind of uh, texture on it so you get a lot of white space. Um, let's see if we can kind of go back over some areas. And, and that might be kind of something with this paper too. This is mixed media paper, but, um, you can go back over it. It's very smooth, but yeah, it's kind of like drawing with lipstick. It is very metallic. I don't know if you guys can kind of see how it's, uh, got a little bit of shimmer to it, but, uh, it is very pretty and I'm kind of using the edge of that lip there. I wonder... Like, ooh, 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 okay. I kind of like just keeping it nice and flat there. It gives you a lot more surface area. That's kind of cool. And then I wonder if we can blend this. Like, I'm just gonna use my finger. That's kind of cool. I mean, it definitely has a very clear line of demarcation. Um. Let's try with a Q-tip. Yeah, kind of similar results. I wonder if we can kind of get this to the point where it kind of blends out really nicely. That's a little bit better. You can kind of gradually kind of lift up your, your pressure and kind of, kind of let it go off gradually. All right, so it's got that kind of capability a little bit. That seems like a very labor-intensive thing, though, which is fine. But I'm just kind of taking some mental notes for myself so I don't back myself into a corner. And I uh, wish I hadn't uh, kind of used it in a particular application. So, all right, this is kind of cool. And if you do use just kind of that real skinny edge there, you can get a very thin line. So that's good. And then I'm just going to sort of see like what like different pressures look like. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, susceptible to pressure. It doesn't completely melt away like a lipstick does. It's a little bit more firm than that, but definitely reminds me of like being a kid and grabbing one of my mom's lipsticks and getting in trouble for uh, using it as a marker. It is very kind of creamy crayon-like. I think it's a really good uh, description here. Art crayon, creamy crayon. All right, the other yeah. thing real quick that I'd like to try is kind of my typical things that I would normally put over colored pencil. I just want to see if those still sort of work. So here's my fine liner. Okay, that works real nice. 
Here's kind of one of my gold metallic markers. That's nice, that shows up. Actually, it's a nice combo. And then just my white Signa gel pen. Ooh, this even shows up. See, I'm just kind of surprised. I didn't think that this would show up over this. Uh, this It doesn't love it, but it doesn't hate it either. I wonder if the Posca marker would be better. Yep. Okay, this will work. Now, the last thing that I wanted to try was to see if I could maybe help some of the blending with a little bit of Gamsol. So, let's try this. Uh, maybe I did that too long ago here. works the same kind of similar to kind of what I was doing just with my finger or just with the dry cotton swab so I don't think that's our silver bullet that's all right I actually really like that so I'm not too worried about it so all right I'll tell you what we're gonna do we're gonna actually maybe try to find a coloring page where we can really show off uh, and just kind of experiment with uh, what this thing can do. And I'm kind of thinking maybe something kind of earthy, um, you know, maybe like harvest kind of theme. You know, we're right around Thanksgiving. I'm very much in that kind of color palette mode. So let's, uh, let's try a page um, and see what we can do with this baby. All right, I think this is the page that I've decided on. It's a double spread and it's from Kirby Rosane's Imagimorphia. And we've got three kind of beautiful male deer here. They've got these like beautifully kind of uh, like etched, like hieroglyphic kind of looking um, um, added, uh, additives on their antlers, which I think is pretty cool. And then this one is sort of left blank. So I think we could come up with something fun to put here. I don't know what yet. And just because this art crayon works really well kind of down as like a flat color um, and then we can put our sharpie pen over it maybe we'll kind of experiment with this on the antlers kind of give them like a nice kind of caramely um you know metallic gold sort of feel to them and uh we'll see uh we'll see how that kind of comes out so i think that's going to be the play so the first thing that i want to do is maybe take one of these like smaller antlers and just kind of start to experiment over here on the side so that we can maybe hone our technique as we get to some of the more ones that are front and center. So I think I'm going to be using my art crayon for now and then maybe just some cotton swabs um, to blend and we'll just kind of see where that goes. And I'm just... Uh... Basically just using that flat side. I wonder how long this thing's going to last. If I run out, <laughs> that would be so sad. It goes down very, very quickly, which, you know, based on how long it normally takes me to color something, I definitely appreciate. Um, but yeah, it goes down very, very quickly. And then when you get to kind of some of these, like, um, more acute angles, you can uh, kind of turn it onto its side there and uh, get right up to the edge. It seems like it would be kind of a blunt instrument, but... You can get really, really kind of fine with it. All right, so let's kind of see what we can do with just blending with a cotton swab. And I didn't really practice like how many layers you can add here. You know, if it would kind of burnish the paper or, you know, not, not take any more color after a certain point, I didn't really experiment with that. So we're gonna find out in real time and that's okay part of the fun of kind of trying new uh, art supplies that you find at the store is experimenting, finding what their limitations are and kind of uh, kind of what they really, really shine at and excel at. All right, I'm pretty happy with that actually. There's just a couple of little spots here that we could maybe go in and kind of fill in, but I mean, to be honest, I am not that worried about it. I kind of, I kind of like the finish that we're getting. All right. I'm just gonna sort of pick that up and just kind of show you guys what it looks like up close. I don't know if you can see how it shimmers a little bit. It's pretty cool. I like that a lot. And the other thing that I like is that it doesn't come off 
like or like powder off there's no like smearing you know, like I can literally drag my finger across here and it doesn't smear so that's very cool because I'm a right hander so if I go to color this one next I'm gonna you know drag it into here that's not gonna happen so very cool I kind of like this so what I think I'm gonna do is just kind of finish off off <laughs> so what I think I'm gonna do is just sort of finish off uh, the rest of the antlers and then we'll come back with our sharpie and uh, maybe come up with a complementary sort of design to add to these antlers and we'll go from there and just to be safe I'm gonna work left to right the one thing I will say is that when you are doing this I would do small sections and blend right away just because when we kind of tried to blend uh, you know some of this that had been sitting there for a few minutes it did not want to blend so I think you have kind of a small window to uh, go in afterwards and kind of push and pull some of this stuff before it uh, quote unquote dries. The other thing that I've kind of figured out as I go here is that, you know, if you just kind of go back and forth, you get a lot of white spaces. But if you kind of use that same like circular motion that you do with your colored pencils, you are sort of able to get back into all of the little nooks and crannies of the tooth of the paper, and it gives you a lot better coverage. So that is a good little learning tip technique as well. And then the other thing that I figured out is I figured out with this kind of reminds me of. Have you guys ever seen those like suede like wall paint techniques? Uh, like Ralph Lauren was really big on that in like the late 90s. There was like Ralph Lauren paint and I remember they had like a suede sort of technique where you could make your walls look like suede and that very much kind of reminds me of this. Very much um, like, like, like suede uh, which is kind of cool. And I'm really happy with the color. The color is beautiful. I kind of worried that it would be a little bit too sort of, I don't even know, like muddy, but it's not. It's a very beautiful sort of gold ochre sort of color. And I don't think it's going to be weird on our antlers. Like antlers are normally very bone, you know, colored. And I don't think that this is such a huge departure where it's, you know, going to be weird. So I am liking it. Now the other thing that I'm finding is that there are all these little kind of, you know, notched out spots here and you really can get into some of these little spots. Like there was this little one up here um, and you really can. You just have to be very precise and very kind of intentional with it and just take your time, like make sure that you can see exactly where your um, like material is going to end up, that little that little end there and then you know you'll be okay you can kind of push some of it with your q-tip too uh which is helpful but for the most part I'm, I'm able to get into these little spots so and as we go through i'm kind of thinking about like if i want to do the other antlers in the same gold and i think i'm not going to not that i don't like this but i kind of want it to be like the star of the show here and so maybe we've got like our main buck here's like the you know, King of Beasts, he's kind of got like the, the main, you know, super, super um, fancy schmancy gold antlers. And maybe the rest of these bucks are kind of, you know, not as high up on the food chain as he is. So we might go to more of kind of a more traditional uh, color palette with these guys, or maybe something else entirely. I don't know, maybe, maybe we'll have some fun with it. But uh, I'm, I'm thinking these are the only antlers that I'm going to do in the gold. All right, so the more I use this, the more the sides of my art crayon are kind of getting a little bit beat up and I'm losing a little bit of that ability to kind of be precise with the edges. So I think I'm going to supplement just a little bit. I'm kind of seeing this little area with the ladybug with these little legs and I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get in between this. So just to kind of supplement a little bit, I think I'm going to go in with my goldenrod and just kind of lay this down in some of those areas and then kind of blend it out just because I don't want to run into you know the issue of you know maybe kind of going over his legs with this and uh, kind of screwing it up so uh, that actually worked out really well the uh, the color especially was kind of spot on so you know that was lucky and... all right and now the last thing I want to do 
there are a couple of spots where I was not able to get like right up to the edge. So I think I'm gonna go in with the goldenrod color that I used over here on the ladybug. And see this area right here is just a little bit away from that line. I think I'm just gonna go in and see if I can supplement with colored pencil. And I can, oh my gosh, it blends so nicely. Like I don't really see any difference. That is awesome. I'm even kind of going into some of these areas in the middle here and kind of filling in. And those are blending really, really nicely. So you can definitely get away with using colored pencil and this in concert, which actually gives me a little bit of an idea. So, you know, this is awesome. It's very shimmery. I really, really like it. But I am missing just a little bit of kind of the shading or some of the, you know, differentiation of tones that, uh, you know, using a couple of colored pencils might give us. So maybe I can go in with a few others and maybe just kind of give them some dimension. Yeah, I think that's good for now. I can always add later. Uh, I think I want to use my bronze and my metallic gold and just kind of see what those do for us. All right, let's start with bronze. And just to play around a little bit, I might just kind of go into some of these it is definitely going right over this and it's looking good. I'm not getting any kind of, you know, like material, like clashing, you know, between the art crayon, you know, whatever the heck that's made out of and uh, our pencils here. They're gelling very well. I wonder if the art crayon is just wax. Water. Oh, it's a watercolor crayon. Why did I not see that? Oh. <gasps> That's interesting. Huh. I'm going to have to try something watercolor with that. So I'm just sort of trying to uh, add in just a little bit of color here just to kind of create some shadows and some kind of differentiation where some of the antlers would be kind of overlapping and touching. And maybe we'll try a little bit of this metallic gold. There we go. This one's a little bit darker. So we're getting a little bit more impact with this one. I like that. So I think we're gonna keep going. I'm kind of liking how my metallic gold, which is just historically been a little bit more of a scratchy pencil for me. I don't know if it's just this particular pencil, if it's always the metallic pencils, but I kind of like the texture that it's giving me because, you know, antlers are not just, you know, flat, smooth. They have a lot of kind of vertical, almost like ribbing along there. Um, you know, length. So I'm kind of using this pencil to simulate a little bit of that texture. And I'm just going to do little sections. And then I think I'm going to just kind of rub them with the cotton swab, just kind of soften them a little bit so that they're not so pronounced. But again, I do kind of like that texture that it's adding. And then just another little note, I think I need a little bit of a darker color. So I did grab my dark umber and I'm just going to start adding in a little bit of dark brown just to add in um, some of this tone as well. All right, now we are at the point where the antlers are, for the most part, kind of done, but I do still want to add some sort of like graphic onto the antlers themselves. They're just kind of blank canvases. I do like the texture here that I added, but just to kind of um, play around with it, and I, I, I like how the artist did uh, the other ones. So I'm either thinking something with my black Sharpie pen, which would be very high contrast. Like this is going to be, you know, black, you know, hieroglyphic, you know, kind of looking uh, symbols on the antlers. Or I'm even kind of thinking like maybe with the gold. My only deal with the gold is that it's not a very sharp tip. It is definitely a little bit of a blunt kind of tip. So I don't know that I'd be able to get a very precise um, let me see if I can show you guys. Like if you angle it this way, you can really see that it shows up there, but flat, it's not as obvious. So this is super high contrast. You can definitely see it and it would match what's here. Or do we want to be a little bit more subtle with it and go a little bit more metallic gold? I don't know the answer. All right. I think I'm going to go this route. I think I'm going to go this route. It'll match what's here. And I think I don't have to be so kind of tight with it because I mean I'd be here for days <laughs> nobody wants to be here for days least of all me 
So maybe we can sort of mimic some of these shapes here, but uh, you know, maybe just make them a little bit more like bigger scale. Yep, you know what, let's just go for it. Let's just go for it, why not? Let's just do it. I think I'm gonna start maybe on this one. I kind of really like the shape of this. Um, so I'm gonna steal some of these shapes here from these other antlers just so it's nice and consistent. This is definitely hard because you're trying to interpret like someone else's squiggles and this is definitely not my style, um, but that's okay. I will, uh, I will kind of adapt it maybe to my style just because I want it to mimic, but I don't want it to necessarily be hard to do. So I might just take some liberties as we go and uh, just kind of incorporate my own style a little bit. All right, that's not too terrible. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Uh, so now we're just going to do it across all of the others. All right, here we are. I really, really like this. I am very, very glad that I went with the Sharpie. I think it came out really nice. Initially, I was in, I was kind of nervous about kind of the boldness that this would bring. I was worried that I would kind of screw up some of these little hieroglyphics or that it would look kind of silly, but I actually really like it. I definitely changed a bit more to kind of a cross between, cross between what was already here that the artist drew in and then kind of my style. So I definitely morphed into something that I was much more comfortable with. So this is a good blend of us both. And I really like it. And I still see a lot of the texture, you know, kind of underneath. It didn't obscure that. Um, so really, really happy with this. I think it's a lot of fun. And uh, I'm really happy still with the color. I think it looks great. So I'm going to color the rest of this and uh, we'll see how it comes out. Our dear page is done. I really, really like how this came out in the end. And I know that the entire kind of point of the page was to try out our art crayon. And I have to say, I, I'm kind of meh on it. I mean, it wasn't terrible. I did like the fact that it sort of covered the antlers in a really quick, um, you know, kind of swath. You know, like normally when you're using you know, something like this, it takes forever. And this was much, much faster. So I can definitely see using this on like backgrounds or like kind of larger format where you need to, you know, kind of fill a space more quickly. But in terms of actually using this for, you know, like coloring more than that, I guess, I don't know. Um, I did like how metallic it was, but this is a very blunt instrument. I mean, this thing is, you know, not built for precision. You can kind of, you know, figure out ways to get into the little nooks and crannies, but it's definitely not built for precision. Um, it is a watercolor crayon though, so I feel like I did it a little bit of a disservice. Maybe I'm not using it correctly. I did try out um, a little bit on uh, some scrap paper, but it didn't really blend out nicely. Like where you actually apply it to the paper, it definitely showed a lot of that like stippling, um, you know, kind of texture. So I'm not quite sure how to get that out. You know, this isn't watercolor paper, so maybe that's, you know, something to, to kind of try next time. Um, but it was really, really fun. It's expensive. This thing I think was almost $6 if memory serves. So definitely, you know, not economical, but I did like how fast it went. So, and, and, and also, like I said, it is metallic. So it's subtle. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. I don't know if it's coming across, but it definitely stands out on the page. It is, you know, a good compliment to everything that's, you know, going on, but um, it isn't stealing the show, but it is kind of the main focal point, and I like that. So love the color, you know, really kind of fun to use, but definitely more of a novelty than anything else. Um, but yeah, really, really fun. And this page was like just okay in my mind until I added these little kind of white uh, paint marker, little fairy lights, kind of, you know, concentrated at the bottom and then kind of you know, kind of um, dispersing as it went up. Um, I really kind of focused it around all of like the little kind of special, you know, areas on the deer here and our little, you know, creatures and whatnot. Really, really cute. I think really kind of made it a little bit more whimsical. So really liked this page, lots of fun, and just kind of a good use to kind of test out our little art crayon here. So definitely a fun one.
Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, please go ahead and tell me down in the comments. Hit the thumbs up button. I really, really appreciate hearing from you guys. Feedback is always appreciated. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, I actually just opened up a merch store on tpublic.com. I'll leave a link to it down in the description. So if you're interested in, you know, maybe some t-shirts or some stickers or some canvas kind of tote bags with either a pencil stash, uh, logos on it, or some quotes from some really cool um, artists and writers and whatnot, all about color, go ahead and check that out. Everything that you purchase from there just kind of helps to keep the lights on here, you know, supports the channel. So I really, really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, the holidays are coming up if you want to check something out for, you know, somebody, you know, that, you know, likes the channel. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Happy coloring. Bye.